Okay, welcome to my talk, what's new in RPM. I'm Florian Festi, I'm one of the three developers of RPM in Red Hat. And we are just having out the new alpha of the upcoming 4.19 release. Um, our releases, for those who don't know, are synced up with Fedora. Fedora is not actually a distribution, it's the test bed for RPM. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so it just landed in Fedora. Turns out uh, it's still a little bit rough at the edges and in the middle and on all other sides too. Um, so if you're interested, probably wait another week or two. We will do another alpha uh, soonish. Um, the release cycle follows the Fedora release, basically the summer Fedora or autumn Fedora release. So uh, we will probably release a beta in summer, July, August-ish, and we'll try to have the final release done for September, more or less. Um, so what are we doing? There are a few major features. The biggest one is probably the sysuser-based user handling, which is not yet enabled in Fedora, so that's something that's also typical of the release process. We have new features, it's getting in the distributions, and the distributions after that have to decide to actually enable it and do the uh, release engineering work to make this happen. Um, this v the idea is that, well, I have a slide on it, I'll talk later about it. Uh, the second big feature is dynamic packaging based on uh, spec snippets, which can gener be generated at build time, so it allows uh, leveraging the information we get from upstream in languages like Python or uh, all the other languages that do have their own packaging formats. So it allows us to pull this basically out and use it in the spec file. Um, there's a new RPM sort uh, utility that sorts by RPM version number, which can be useful for some shell scripts. Some people urgently wanted that. Uh, and we finally added uh, pre-untrans and uh, post-untrans scriptlets, which basically complete the set of uh, scriptlets. No idea if anyone needs those, but they were obviously missing to complete, uh, basically have scriptlets everywhere. Uh, there are a couple of internal changes, which are actually the, the larger parts. Uh, we deprecated a couple of old uh, uh, APIs, so if you were using the RPM APIs, you may want to look at this. They have been deprecated for uh, years, but it turns out no one cares. So we patched like four or five packages in Fedora, which is the DNF bunch and a couple of more that we're still using the old ones. If you are having things like, I don't know, super maybe, um, you might want to look into that. Um, the biggest change internally is we moved away from autoconf uh, to CMake, which has the great side effect of touching everything, which means every part of RPM has a now a fair chance of being broken, and we found like a half a dozen already. Um, things like stuff not being set properly. Uh, the first build had 32-bit uh, off type internally, and while everyone else was using 64-bit, which makes for interesting breakages. Um, we split out the translations into a separate project. That's probably only for the one that packages RPM itself. You need to have another tarball. Uh, no one else cares, other than us, not getting all those updates from the, pack from the translation teams. Um, there's work still ongoing on the test suite. We'll see if it makes it into the final release. Um, to get rid of uh, uh, fake fake Giroud. And another thing that it's better handling of build resources. We started doing that a couple releases ago uh, with where we started to have the builds be run in more parallel. And it turns out uh, those pesky 32-bit machines don't have that much memory address space. So if you're running too many parallel uh, threads or processes, creates problems, and we have now a um, way to better deal with that. Let's look at the two major features, which is for one, no user handling. We've uh, modeled this uh, to some degree on the stuff that SUSE already does, actually. Um, so um, there's a dependency generator for um, sysuser files, 
and for ETC uh, PassVD um, to generate uh, provides. There's also a, part in, a new part in RPM that uh, creates the matching requires, or if you dial it down a notch, the uh, matching recommends, so you can do ordering by files using uh, the by files owned by the user, so you have you actually are sure that the user itself is installed before the files uh, that the user owns, um, and we have parts to actually create a user on ourselves, so you no longer need uh, scriptlets to to create those users. Um, it's a bit of a hack, but it's eh, I mean that's how RPM is. I you make a hack, or you have to add a bunch of stuff that's more, even more complicated. So we basically uh, push the sys users line into the into the version uh, base 64 encoded, and um, we're currently just calling systemd sys users. I made I may have the time to do something for people that don't use uh, systemd. But in theory, the systemd sys users can even run without systemd, so there's a standalone version, but it still, of course, comes with a small library attached to it, which is basically the size of systemd. Um, but in theory, uh, of course, that's all the usual macro stuff, calling a script, doing stuff. You can redefine it to do something else kind of thing, and we'll probably try to make a shell script that just calls uh, end user and something. It shouldn't be hard, it's just not done yet in the, in the current alpha. I don't know if anyone here cares. But there are, there are weird stuff that runs RPM. I hear, I hear there's an RPM-based dis, distribution on Windows, done at Meta, uh, at Meta and, and stuff like this, so yeah, whatever they're doing. Yeah, or, or S2 or whatever. There's all kind of crazy stuff out there, and they can basically hook something else up there if they want to. Um, of course, you cannot. You can also choose just to not use that. Uh, the current Fedora package disables the depend the provides generation. I think so. It doesn't actually do that yet because that's also one of the things that we want people to enable, like in a controlled manner, before everything blows up, um, which has of course never happened ever. Um, the second thing, which is also pretty interesting, is a gen a generic spec generation. I just did a one hour <laughs> workshop on this, so sorry you missed it if you've not been there. Um, but it boils down to you can basically now put spec snippets into a file during build, and RPM will read those after after install and use that to uh, generate sub packages. They are still a couple of bells and whistles missing there, so it's still pretty uh, basic. So it's only for sub packages. You can't do the main package yet. That's something I will probably try to sneak in if no one notices. Um, but I hope we can get this done. And it's currently a pretty. It's currently a pretty surprisingly small feature for for what it can do. The idea is basically whenever you have prepackaged software like Python or whatever, you can basically pull out all the metadata from the manifest files and create sub packages from that. Uh, there's an, I've, I don't even have that on the slide here. Um, there's actually a patch for, it's, no, the upcoming release has an extension to find lang to actually be able to create uh, language sub packages automatically basically you just have to give a parameter and then it creates those sub packages in this in a in a file and they're read in and then built. So um, where are we in time wise? Roadmap what's the next thing? We will doing an RPM V6 format. There's another slide on that. Uh, don't get excited yet. There's probably more dynamic packaging features. File triggers are on the list of being looked at again. They still have some issues that I'm currently not fully understanding, but someone needs to look into that. Um, there are plans to make it, finally making the plugin API public. RPM has plugins in, internally, stuff like SA Linux and uh, the, the reboot inhibit stuff that's all done with plugins and it's currently in tree and don't touch that and don't look at it to get public. 
And there's more work on the crypto consolidation front. That's something we've actually done in the last release, mainly out of line, more or less. We've sneak, sn snuck that into Fedora without anyone looking. Um, so uh, as the V6 format, that's something some people have looked. <laughs> it's boring. Don't get excited. There's nothing happening that, that, that should get you excited. It doesn't mean there's nothing exciting. It's just not in the V6 format. Um, so it's basically about cleaning up the header format. There's a lot of stuff that's uh, underdefined, like ordering the, the, spec, uh, the ordering of tags, like what stuff is zeroed out. Um, they will be moving to 64-bit uh, sizes. A lot of stuff is at least as an option 32 bits, which is kind of ridiculous in this day and age. But I mean, it's RPM is 30 years old now. Um, that's what happens. Uh, we will drop the old CPIO pilot format. We already have a new one, which is used for packages with large files, because for some reason, when we talk to the CPIO upstream about having a 64-bit uh, file sizes, he said, well, aren't you from IPM? Aren't you the only one still using CPIO? Go away. So we did. Um, uh, there are a couple of crypto stuff where where old uh, outdated uh, um, hashes are still supported, they will go the way of the dodo, and we will enforce UTF-8, which is kind of done, but not really yet. And it's basically all about throwing old, throwing out old craft and enforce good standards and say, well, if it's a new version, um, you can't do that shit uh, anymore. But it means it's it really is boring, and you shouldn't get excited. You should be excited for, for other, th other things. So, questions? Oh, God. <laughs> Neil. <laughs> How about fixing the endianness problem with RPM headers? Can we do that in the V6, or is that too exciting for your blood? <laughs> Is there a problem? <laughs> yeah. The, the endianness of the RPM headers depends on what architecture it was built on. OK, we will look into that. It's not on the list. I can put it there. I thought, I thought we are. We don't enforce endian. We don't force little endian like I the other that, RPM I, did. I thought it's, wor it's worse. It's actually on disk, it's defined. And when, then we are swapping it over to the, to the in, in memory, we are swapping the bytes. No, it just looks corrupted to the RPM of the other architecture. That's what it does. OK. Yeah. So it's just broken. The, the whole thing is just broken there. That, that's possible. That's one of the. We, we touched most pieces of code since we took over the project in the last, uh, like, 60, I don't know, 16 years, 12 years about, ago? About 10 years now. Oh, it's more, I think. But anyway. Uh, uh, I think 2007-ish. Oh, then that's 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or even earlier. Um, so, but they, they, are, they are code we've not touched yet. Oh, yeah. There's, there's only limited sanity that can be spent on those areas. Any other questions? Um, did you already update the documentation, like the? Um, so first of all, thanks for for adding pre untrans and post untrans. Uh, you said you are not sure if you if somebody needs it. I don't remember what it was, but I once needed it, so I appreciate this very much. However, I would like to ask you to update the the Fedora packaging guide. There you have this nice table with the. Uh, with the shell parameter one, two, if, is it an install, upgrade, uh, removal uh, for the different pre and, and so on? And please get this updated. So it's a very thank you for asking this question. We do now have uh, documentation, but it's not a Fedora one because this is an upstream project, and we do have our own documentation. Okay, which but is, which is a lot better than it used to be. We put a lot of work into that the last two years or something. But are pre-untrans and post-untrans uh, documented there already? I would hope so, but uh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not betting my life on it now. <laughs> okay, but nevertheless, uh, if you find some time to do yeah. it before the release, please yeah. do. Thanks. Thank you.